Oh, yeah, fine. Of course, that means I don't have to take notes, right? Yeah. Go ahead, Officer Wilson. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you guys all know I'm Michelle Wilson. I am your uh, BPD uh, liaison for West Slope. I have been for, I think, a few years now. Um, just some updates. You guys probably have heard that we moved into our new building, which is at 6125 Southwest Hall Boulevard. Um, so we are actually completely moved over there, all of our different divisions. Um, so we are um, functioning out of that location. If somebody needs to walk up and report something, um, it would be that location versus the Griffith uh, Park location. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a bunch of stuff prepared just because I wasn't sure how this form would exactly work. Um, I know right now with the smoke um, and all the things going on, just again, I'm advising people to make sure and keep your property locked up. We've had a lot of different theft from vehicles, crimes of opportunity, things like that. So just make sure and keep your valuables out of your vehicle, keep your vehicles locked up, the windows up. Um, people will just go by and um, try door handles to see who they can, uh, you know, what car they can get into, things like that. So just make sure and keep your property safe. Uh, keep your homes locked up. If you have gates in your backyard, lock up, stuff like that so that your personal items aren't um, stolen. Uh, that's just something that we've seen kind of with the coronavirus is, you know, that some of those petty crimes um, kind of uptick, I think, when, when these things happen. So um, aside from that, I don't know if people have questions. Um, like I said, this is the first time I've done a virtual um, meeting for NAC, so I, I wasn't quite sure exactly how it was going to function and flow. So um, that's pretty much the updates I have in that in the, the realm of police right now. If somebody has any questions, I'm happy to try to answer those as well for you today. I have a question. Sure. You have a new chief. Yes. Could you describe um, this individual? I'm not familiar with her. Yeah, so um, Chief Groshong, she was our interim chief uh, for the last quite a few months. I'm not exactly sure when she transitioned uh, by date from the top of my head, but she's been transitioned to this role. Um, she's been with Beaverton Police for many years. Um, and has moved up the rankings. Um, I don't know if you have specific things interested about her, but um, yeah, I mean, things are, you know, um, I guess moving along as far as having a now a, um, not an interim chief, but an actual appointed chief. Um, just a note that um, in our last BCCI meeting, they mentioned that if we want to have the chief come to our NAC meeting, any NAC meeting in the future, that she will make her, uh, herself available. Yeah, I've also heard that. I think she has attended some um, various NAC meetings. I'm not sure which ones, but if that's something you wanted, I think probably Miles and I could work on getting that sorted out for you guys, or if you guys have a, a direct route of doing that, that's fine as well. Yeah, good. I can invite her for, for you guys whenever mm -hmm. you're ready. Yeah. Well, what do you think of your new digs? It's uh, nice. It's definitely, you know, it's there. We're working out some kinks right now. So, um, you know, just I think the moving, typical moving pains of getting, you know, gates opened and um, different things in the facility, but it's nice. It's, I like the location. I like the, the building is nice. Um, you know, I can speak for the ladies' locker room. It's very clean and nice. So I do <laughs> like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice building. Good. Excellent. I think it'll be a great place for, um, you know, it's obviously like the other building, they're close off the freeway. And I think foot traffic wise, people are, you know, we're in a, a location that people can get to easily to make reports or if they need police. So I think that's kind of nice. Are there any offices still remaining on Griffith? Um, our courts are still over there, but as far as police go, we have all moved to the new building. So none of the police services are coming from Griffith at this point. They're all coming from uh, the, the building on um, Hall, but the, the courts are still there. Um, they're not opened at this point, um, other than I think they're doing like phone calls and things like that, but um, they're not completely fully functional with uh, the coronavirus stuff going on. Thank you. Anything else? Any questions from anybody? Oh, yeah, I got a question. Okay. Um, yeah. 
How's it uh, been policing with uh, less people on the streets these days and less people on the highway and uh, basically everywhere? Everyone's been staying indoors. So I, as far as call volume goes, I haven't really personally seen a change. We're still getting the same amount of call volumes. I, I would, that's just from me seeing what's on the board. I wouldn't, I don't have exact data of if we're getting more calls or not. Um, but obviously when this first came um, to be the pandemic, we've been trying to take more calls over the phone versus going in person, especially for people who are more at risk and being able to handle stuff over phone calls if possible. But we're still um, getting dispatched to, you know, all of our 911 calls. We're still taking all of the calls um, in person that require emergency response and things like that. So I haven't seen um, a ton of change. I know the traffic. Um, I work obviously the night shift, so the traffic's not as bad. Um, but I've just noticed around town, it seems like the traffic is down quite a bit. Um, in comparison to how kind of our rush hours were before. But um, yeah, we're still taking a lot of calls. Like I said, some of the calls that we're seeing a lot more are like thefts and things like that. I think just kind of the crimes of opportunity. Um, I think that, you know, obviously more people are home and not working and things like that. Okay, uh, if, you're still, if you're still touring our neighborhood, have you noticed mm -hmm. that the, uh, the, the Shiloh M is packed? I've never seen that many cars in that parking lot because there's all these people that are uh, evacuees. Am I not mistaken? Yes. So I know um, just from a personal friend of mine who uh, had to evacuate and she actually ended up staying uh, at my house, but they, they were, they called multiple hotels. They were able to get one for a night, but um, hotels are completely packed as far as, as that goes I, on the police side. I haven't had to deal with anything specifically with the hotels, but I have noticed that, there does seem to be a lot of people at the hotels right now. And I'm sure that is something to do with, you know, all the people who are on evacuation notices and are, you know, not able to be at their homes right now. Anybody else, anything? No, no, we're good here. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Well, you guys can always reach out to me via email. I know I'm I'm a people person, so I much like uh, much rather be in person to see you guys and answer questions. But um, you guys are always welcome to email me if something comes up in between meetings or you need anything. Um, I work swing shift, um, so I work 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. and I work uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays. So feel free to. If you need to get in touch with me, um, send me an email. If you need me to give you a call or something, shoot me your phone number and I'll catch up with you guys if there's something specifically, you know, that I can help you guys with right now. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I'm probably gonna sign off just because I am working the road okay. right now. Okay, thank so. you so much, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you guys you. stay safe, stay careful out there. You too. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, that was our agenda. <laughs> Where'd Kent go? Were, yeah, no, nobody showed up. What do you mean? No, my other meeting, I can't figure out. How to, I've got two computers going. <laughs> I can't figure out. It, it, so, it sounds like you're talking out of a coffin, man. But you can hear me. Where's my video? You can't. Oh, okay. Start my video. There we go. <laughs> that was painful. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got four board members. I think that is a quorum still. Who's the other two? Oh, wait, yeah. There's still Dieter, Chris, and Joe Whittington, but four, which would be Jerry, Kent, yeah. me, and Terry, is enough to have a vote. Well, Board members, we have a uh, election coming up, <laughs> of all things. <laughs> Always an election. <laughs> Actually, our our elections are pretty easy. We don't need. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to go through the uh, the general process. All we've got to do is show up, but we're going to have to do it like we're doing it right now. I, I think, okay. if I'm not mistaken, Miles, we're got everything's probably going to have to be virtual for at least the next two months. I don't say that. 
Well, I know. Well, I know the school's closed. That's why we're in. Yeah. That's why we're yeah. meeting here yeah. tonight. You know, I just don't like to think about it. <laughs> How about you, Miles? How long is the city going virtual? Have they extended it to a certain deadline at this? They point? announced they're going through November. Mid November. Um, Mid November. Okay. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if it gets pushed back further. Um, and then I think there's possibility that some people will just stay remote workers going forward. Um, yeah. City Hall's running out of space, so oh. I'm more than happy to work from home. Yeah. Work them out to the neighborhoods and meet people where they, where they are. Yeah. Can we get uh, a package of uh, NAC masks? Uh, sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, so you'll you'll I'll still have, have your door to door and get to you know talk to people and, and give them a little bit of a you know peace of mind. There you go. You want a couple of masks and then uh, yeah, the Mac the NAC's still around. If you got any other concerns. You know, like about traffic and all the fun stuff that we deal with. You know, feel free to give me a call or send me an email, and then we'll have to just move on from there. Before, um, who might be willing to, you know, you could change that duty or that role, and that they could watch, and if they see someone doing something, um, on a different so, top. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. I was just going to say, um, since this is your first meeting on Zoom, the NACs that met over the summer actually saw an increase in participation. Um, people who normally couldn't make it to the meetings called in. This month, all the meetings have been light, and I think it's just with everything going on, school starting. Um, so I, w I wouldn't be surprised if in the following next couple of months you see more participation. Uh, that's okay. the trend I've seen. Cool. So, so don't let tonight be the, the bellwether. Okay, but I have to ask, since we only have six pictures on my screen right now, and one guy's not even on the phone yet, even he's, though he might be there. He's on the phone. What happens he, when more people show up? I mean, or who monitors this and adds more people, and all of a sudden we've got a page full of people? Yeah, so I think it can go up to 40. Um. And we can always change it so that only board members have video and regular attendees just um, can hear and see everything, but you can't see them or hear them unless you... But they can ask questions? They can, you can unmute them, but they can't just uh, speak out of turn. Oh, there's Chris. Hey, buddy. Um, okay, interesting. So like you said, if we increase uh, participation in the next month or two before we might quote unquote, get back to some sort of normal, um, then yeah, so it's the big screens will show all the, uh, the members, the council members or whatever you call it, oh, sorry. Um, and then all the other people that want to ask questions, because I know there's people in my NAC right now that have questions about some stuff and that they would love to talk about, but they really can't, unfortunately, just because it's, this is the way it's going right now. They can always, uh, you know, contact me. Uh, oh, yeah, you can always contact me through uh, email and, uh, for the city of uh, Beaverton, we'll happy to, if you send them an email instead, they'll be happy to forward it, right? Okay. And then, um, yeah, the other thing I would say is, even as things start to open up, I'm not sure what the schools are gonna do with outside groups. Um, especially don't know about Portland Public Schools, but the NACs that meet in Beaverton Public Schools, I'm, I'm not sure that they'll be allowed back into the buildings anytime soon, um, if at all. Yeah, that whole situation is gonna get interesting. Yeah. 
So we might all be meeting at Carl's house, I guess. Oh. Hey. <laughs> I've got to pull in my crop first. Got too much, got too many tomatoes and cucumbers out back. <laughs> So Terry, I think I, I interrupted you a minute ago. I'm sorry. Oh, well, no, I had an off topic questions, but uh, I'll ask it now if it's good time. Go ahead. Um, how did we do with uh, respect to getting our reimbursement from the city from our appeal? Were, were we successful? Did we follow all the appropriate steps in order to get our appeal uh, reimbursed? Build a check. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, months ago. Okay, all right. Two. Who's ever listed as your treasurer? Ken Wolfgang, I guess. Yeah. And that's who you sent my coffee clutch uh, reimbursement to also? No, your money's going to you. Ah, okay. You were there, and you were there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Excellent, Terry. Yeah, Terry, everything was done the way it was supposed to, so. Fantastic. Well, thank you. The check. Even though we lost. Um, I don't know that you lost. lost. I don't think the school got very much what they wanted. I mean, Chris did an incredible job negotiating with them. I sat in in all those meetings and. Um, she did. She was yeah. a great help, but now she's gone, right? No, Chris is here. He's Hi. on the phone right now. I phone. thought you had no help. No, I, I think that that appeal went about as good as an appeal could. I think, um, and like you said, Chris did a great job and really hit the points. And we had a couple of city council people who were definitely feeling our pain. I think that the, uh, the, our sentiments really were well represented in. Like I said, we did about as good as we could have. <laughs> yeah. And you really, really followed like um, identifying the code sections that were applicable um, instead of just showing up and saying, we don't want it. We don't like it. So <laughs> I had another neighborhood that was doing an appeal at the exact same time um, to planning commission and, and they totally lost um, because they didn't reference the code. They didn't, um, they just didn't have the right argument to for the planning commission to make a change. So, yeah, and in my humble opinion, I think you really have a lot more latitude at the city council. Oh, absolutely. They just have more latitude to pull in different uh, different code sections. I mean, they were citing like the city code rather than the development code when we were talking about things like noise, and so. It was, um, it was just, I think there are more, they just have more latitude within their discretion yeah. in these matters than the planning commission. Yep, the planning commission's gotta stick to what's written in the code and the elected officials can definitely do other things. Yeah, yeah, that was my experience. So always go straight to the top, that's my advice. Well, if you have the option. Well, and I do have an announcement, a BCCI announcement, if this is an appropriate time in our rather loose agenda. <laughs> um, we have an election this fall. Has anybody, has anybody heard about that? Anyway, we have some local elections that are pretty important. And on October 14th, we are going to have a virtual voters forum. So it will be set up like this where um, you will get, first of all, you'll get a card in the mail, correct, Miles? There will be information coming to you in the mail about how to participate in this voters forum. And it will be a link to, you know, some, I don't know exactly what software they're using, if it's gonna be Zoom or some other software, but uh, nevertheless, there will be a link and, um, you will be able to listen to candidates who will be speaking. The two mayoral candidates will be there. Um, we will have- yeah, Who's, who's three, running against Denny? Is it Betty? Lacey Beatty. Oh, Lacey, yeah. that's it. 
And there are three people running for the new uh, council seat that has been formed because of our um, the new charter. Right. Um, let me see. So, so the overseer that's created by the the charter is a new council seat, and that's an no. There's going position? to. I think I'm getting this wrong. Well, there's a there's going to be a city manager, and that's, oh, that's a, yeah. an administrative position that is going to be, uh, you know, the the person will be solicited through the regular process, personnel process. City council will effectively hire that person. Okay, but it's not elected. But there is a new city council seat that was created as a result. Okay, yeah, but the city manager thing is not elected. No, that okay, is an administrative you. manager, all, kind of a, an executive county. Think of them as a city executive. Um, do you remember what other rate? Oh, it might be the Washington County Commissioner. Mm -hmm. seat? That was the third uh, race. Yeah. Okay. With um, Jeff Hinkle and Nafasa. Yeah, two two people on uh, vying for that position. Yeah. So um, those are all positions that are affecting us on a local government level. So um, tune in October fourteenth. I think you'll be well informed. And if you have any questions that you would like to have the candidates answer. Um, Miles can probably help you uh, get to the right link from the city website. They're really looking, they're looking, he's down there on my screen. Um, they're looking for uh, questions to ask all of these folks. So for example, if you have a question for the new mayor or you have a question for a new city councilor or a county commissioner, um, we are really interested in hearing your questions. Well, normally tonight's meeting would feature a candidate or two or three or four, uh, but and then but I haven't heard from anybody, and so uh, we might get a few requests for the October virtual meeting, and that, that would be a good good agenda okay. item. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm surprised that none of the NACs have heard from candidates yet. Um, which is surprising. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, because usually they're making the rounds by now. Well, usually, yeah, they'd probably go to one NAC on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and, 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 and call it a week and ha hit a bunch of people. They, they can't do that right now, unfortunately. So, that, yeah. So they might contact me, and if they do, will they come on? Uh, here like officer wilson was and then get the yep. wrong square yep and that has to go through you yeah okay i just need their email so if they did if you just want to send me their email and their name i can take care of it with just that um i have a couple of terry were you done with yes. your BCC? i have a couple of city updates for you um one is about the city manager so the city is going to hire an interim city manager to help us tra transition from the mayor being in charge to a city manager, a professional manager being in charge. Um, there's a lot of work to be done with the, the code and city departments. I work in the mayor's office. I'm not sure where I'll work coming up. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and you guys are probably too young to remember, but do you know why we went to a strong mayor form of government? Because we used to have a city manager in Beaverton. I heard this. You heard this? Yeah, there was, a, there was an initiative, right? Yeah, there was a city manager that the residents didn't agree with and the council refused to fire. And so there was a city uh, citizen initiative to install a strong mayor form of government <laughs> about 20 years ago. So we've gone back the other way. Uh, my other update is the city's just finished up some listening sessions um, with some different community groups centered around um, people of color and public safety and some in institutional racism. Um, they're coming out with a 
they hired a consultant to do all this and they're coming out with a report on what the where the city stands and what it can do um, to be more in line with the recommendations. So that'll be coming up before council at a future meeting. I haven't seen it posted yet, but um, I don't imagine it's too far out. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Chief Groshong has come out to a couple of the neighborhood meetings. Um, I'm happy to invite her for you. Get out of here, cat. We're all um, <laughs> And uh, she really doesn't come out with a presentation. She comes out to take questions. Um, it can be general questions about the police department. It can be about the Black Lives Matter movement, protests. Um, yeah, pretty much anything you want to ask her. So she's been to about, I think about half the next so far. Cool. I keep getting calls from my relatives asking if I if my house is on fire because of protests. And now they're calling me to ask me if my house is on fire because of wildfire. <laughs> I'm like, hey, West Slope's cool. We're all cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's so, the way it is, right? Yeah. If there's any questions for me, I can take them now, or you can always email me. OK. so. Michelle's still going to be our liaison for the next meeting? Yeah, so okay. that changed since the last time we talked to Carl. Um, okay. She was a liaison to two neighborhoods, and I guess she just wanted to give up one of them and not West Slope, but that got lost in translation, so you get a keeper. <laughs> She's cool. What was the other question I had? God, I got one more, one more. Uh, she was right about the um, petty crime, the theft from vehicles. Oh, yeah, we've had crime, but we can't, that no one's on board right now to tell us about it, unfortunately. Yeah, there's been a lot of that across the city. Our crime rate has been going up quite a bit lately. But for West Slope, that means we've had two vehicle accidents instead of one in the last three months. Yeah, you have a pretty quiet neighborhood. It's the way you like it, right? People have been dumping dead animals over the wall, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, okay. Great. So next time we'll have people on here also, and some locals as well, and some other non-board members, let's put it that way. Yeah. And we can have um, THPRD has a liaison for you. Oh. Um, so we can, we can start that next month. Oh, that'd be great, yeah. Is They've undergone a ton of. Schrader? I'm not sure who it is. Ah. Uh, I'd have to look it up. Um, they've undergone a ton of change in employment and who's working there, who's not working there. They're hiring a bunch again. So, but they can tell you all about that. I just know a lot of people I used to work with over there aren't there anymore. Yeah, they're gone. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which means. Kent, Kent and I don't know who to get a hold of to ask about the <laughs> the big property right down the street. I mean, nursery property, man. Nothing's going on. You see anybody over there, Kent? Over where? No, at the nursery? No. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're only there to do landscaping. Oh, no, I was talking if they're doing anything. Anyway. Yeah, they're, they're mowing the lawn. They're clearing it up a little bit. And that's it? Yeah, well, that's all I've asked them to do. I mean, that's going to be, if anything else costs money, so they're not going to do that. So, like I was saying earlier about the uh, Parton Public Schools property, the, THPRD is, is going to be suffering the same amount of, uh, you know, uh, tax money not flowing through there and they're not going to be able to do anything with that property for a while. And so I don't think PPS is going to be able to do anything with that middle school property either. They don't have the money. Anyway. I meant, um, to, Carl, could, I meant to ask a question about the PPS property. I don't know if Chris or Terry knows. At some point, I heard that um, the NAC was looking into how they're, before coronavirus, like, really took off, like, 
how they were funding that and if it was oh, yeah. proper funding. Um, did anything ever come of that? I, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I think that was uh, Chris Swenson's wife uh, was going to be looking into that. So I think yeah, she, she was. Th this is Chris. Um, oh, yeah, hey. she was looking into it, and one of our neighbors also was was looking into it. And um, it it's kind of this gray area. They they have the 2017 school bond money, um, and I think the neighborhood position was that that was an inappropriate source of funds. But um, you know, we talked to some of the auditors and the PPS folks, and they're sort of arguing the other way and it seems to be kind of a, a gray area so i don't know that there's really any resolution on that uh what we do know is that that amount of money is is not enough to complete what they want to do it would be enough to say put up the lights and some fencing but it wouldn't be enough to build all the structures that they want so um we don't really know uh, very much other than they don't have enough for for everything so that, that kind of leads into, I was going to suggest maybe for the next meeting or maybe even the meeting after to invite maybe a PPS representative to come and give us an update at the NAC as to what their plans are. Cause you know, nothing's happening up there now. Um, they've obviously got the, you know, the, the permit from the city, but um, we, we really don't know what they're up to. So it'd be kind of nice to, to get someone from there to maybe come in and tell us what they're planning. Chris, do you have the name of the the person that's going to be the regular contact? Uh, I, I'll have to look for it. It was it came up in the meeting. It was the uh, um, Portland Public Schools athletic director, and apparently his job is to kind of go around and do exactly that. Yeah. And I think the the original intent was that he would he would be our contact once the project got going. But I don't see any reason why we couldn't ask him to come and just meet the NAC, even though the project hasn't started yet. Yeah, um, just to kind of you know let us know what's up. So, I will I will look back on my records and see. Um, I, I yeah I've got it somewhere, so I'll let you know. Okay, thanks, Chris. Yeah, and, and send mm -hmm. me an email when you get that info. I'll be happy to go bug them too. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And I think I think there's no reason why we couldn't you know uh, lay out some of the issues that are already here. I mean. It's just not exactly his job. He's not required to do all this stuff, but PPS sort of put him forward as an olive branch, so to speak, as, as to, you know, establishing a liaison and better communication with the community. So I think if there's general questions, you know, we could at least ask him, and he may or may not know the answer, but um, it'd, it'd be good just to start making contact with that guy because I think he'll be an important person, especially if they do, you know, break ground for the construction. Because they could save oh, half a million dollars right now if they went in and did it while school is out for a long, you know, school's out for at least six more months, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So without yeah, the kids, they, don't have the money. There, they could hire a contractor that could work there all day and take care of the situation and do whatever work they wanted and probably bring a doubt in the budget. But I'm, that's not my job. Yeah, they, they don't have the money to do the whole thing. I, and again, I don't know why they haven't done at least part of it, but it, it could be they're just figuring, though, they'd like to do it all at the same time. And maybe PPS can kind of give us an update on what their, their strategy is. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, give me some info. I'll, I'll go get them. Anybody else got any questions? Ken? Can you hear me? Carl? Uh, do we ever clean up that deer carcass on the other? No, we can hear you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, do we ever clean up that deer carcass on the other side of the, the berm? I showed you that, right? Oh. People have been dumping trash in our neighborhood, and somebody, somebody bagged the deer, cut the head off, and dumped it over the... the the berm right by my house. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, right along Highway 26. But I've been so, yeah, the smarter people I've been bugging big time is uh, ODOT. They need to get in here and clean up their stuff. Because they, they were, their property along there is incredibly fire prone right now. And after 
every all the fires have been going on, I've been kind of bugging them big time. You know, hey, man, you guys need to tear this, you know, at least get in here and whack it. And uh, they've shown little interest in cleaning up their property, which is lies within our jurisdiction, unfortunately. But that's ODOT. I'll get them again, too. Did anyone know what's going on with that, that Caribe? The what? That Caribe restaurant down there. Mm. Oh, I... They painted the whole thing. Nobody knows. Every, everybody's kind of, you know, and all those businesses are really struggling right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Plaid Pantry's pleading for you to bring their change. So you. Seriously, I mean, there's a chain shortage in the on the whole uh, nation. <laughs> that particular plaid wants your wants your chains, man. They're happy to take it instead. Of, you know, you show up typically with five dollars worth of quarters, and they're like, "Hey, man, what's this?" But now they're like, "Welcome." <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that, all those guys are hurting because there's no business. Yeah, that took him. I can't understand how they get the money to paint the whole building. Where's that at, Kent? Yeah, that's Car the Caribe. It's the restaurant right at the top of, well, right. You used, used to get in a lot of trouble. Let's the, put it that way. Yeah, Is it the one across from um, the Plaid Pantry there, kind of? Yeah, yeah okay. 87th and Canyon. Across from the Eastern Pearl. Yeah. Okay. A little farther north than from the intersection. Sure. You have uh, an adult business in it. No. No, not that building. It's got Edward Wadsworth, and it's got the Oolong Cafe. Okay, I know where that's at. Yeah, they just got done painting up the whole thing. It looks kind of nice. So who's paying for that? We'll see. Okay. Well, well let's uh, check on that and get back with us. Well, I don't know who to ask. They're just. Oh, I don't know who that is. Well, it used to be a yeah, it used to be a Latin quote unquote Latin dance club, which was only open at like nine o'clock till two a.m. in the or four a.m. in the morning, and that's when they had a lot of trouble. And so, cause people had a hard time getting out of that parking lot. I think. Anyway. Well, that's a good question. I'll check into it too. Yeah. If it's a good, if you know, if something cool, looks pretty. Come to our meeting. Introduce yourself. Can't do that right now, though. Yeah. Well, it might be easier for them to do it online. Carl, I meant to ask you. There's some activity going on uh, north of your your house. Is that you, or is that something else? South. Sorry, what? You mean south? No, I mean north. It was clearing. Well, yeah, south of you, someone is building there, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. That guy's cool. He's building a house. He's building a, a single story ranch style. North of me is ODOT land. Yeah. ODOT, okay. The what's, what's the plan there? Nothing. That's what I'm talking about. They, they came through, and I, because I said, hey, there's, like three of the, there's three tall trees that are non-natives that were dead and they're still dead. And now they're covered with ivy. And <laughs> okay. I complained about that and they said, oh yeah, we'll send out a crew. So they sent out a, an inmate crew to clear that whole property. And they cleaned out everything, including all of these other bushes and trees that yeah. gave me a certain modicum of privacy. Mm -hmm. They cleaned it all, except for the trees that I complained about, but where are still <laughs> standing. Give me a break. So now I got to build a fence somewhere along there because, yeah, my my house is standing there naked right now as we speak. And uh, it used to be totally covered. I mean, you used to be able to walk up the bike path and you didn't even know it was there unless you knew it existed. Yeah. And now it, everything's yeah. toast. But like I said, yeah, the trees are still there. And they said, oh, well, we sent in the the the, the crew, the, you know, happen to be inmates, um, to clean everything out so that the professional uh, 
guys could get in there and hack down the trees because we we're not allowed to do that, and uh, we're I'm still waiting on that. Okay. I still go out once a month now and clean up graffiti on mm -hmm. uh, the signs and the door going out really? to the highway, and because some there's somebody running around doing a lot of tagging these days. That's why they call it goof off. It works really well. But <laughs> that's me doing that, man. It's not uh, good luck getting anything out of ODOT. Yeah, it's true. So, anyway, yeah, th they have no plans. That it's was okay. it. Hey, we tore everything out. We're just going to let that ivy keep growing. That's fine. But I thought about it the other day because the ivy is really healthy and it's nice and green. So, when it, you know, everyone was worried about fires popping around here. If somebody happened to throw something over the, you know, the sound wall and landed back there, ivory would have cut it down, man. It's, it's not like it's grass fire, which is good. But on the other hand, it's ivy. <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's let everybody go. Anybody, any other uh, concerns or questions? I'm, I'm still here. Yep, we're good. All right, well, we'll have to, Carl to put an agenda together for next month and we'll see what happens. Who will we send the emails out to? Um, We've got this goofy list, but it's, it's in their, it's in their banks. I don't have yeah, that. There is. 229 emails on that list and people have to sign they have to agree to get that mm -hmm. um, they have to like confirm a subscription and it's really easy to opt out so there's 229 people getting the agendas each month and i can send other emails to them if there's something else important um you want to let them know about or want to do well, if we get that person from PPS, that should be real important. We should get those people back. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we added a bunch of those people to that list um, right at yeah. the beginning. So. Yeah. Yeah, we can kind of highlight that on the email so they know. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. All right. Anybody's got any agenda items, email them to me and I'll get them set up for next month. Otherwise, we'll hear from uh, uh, Michelle Wilson and uh, somebody from THPR&D. But also somebody from, okay, so who are you going to get from THPRD? Do you want Janine Rustad, I mean, for the property or? Oh, if you really want to go for it, should we go find, should we go after her? Well, it's less threatening online. Yeah. Your, your regular knack person who will just come give regular updates from THPRD is they don't know enough. Great or, I know you, not somebody who can handle it. Yeah. He's got the money. Yeah, the net, the Tolan Hills rep that never knows enough. Yeah. Okay. And then TVF and R, I mean, they're, like you said, they, they just got a, a standard kind of loop thing that we can play at the beginning, right? Yeah, I can play a video from them. All right. All right, there we go. Um, well, and maybe see if you can get a couple of candidates. Yeah, oh, exactly. Well, they're the ones that should be contacting me, not the other way around. I mean, if they're really running for office, they should be serious about it and, con and doing the contact. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, we have very well, we will have very few opportunities to meet these people. Maybe, maybe the new council seat might be. I mean, at least the mayoral people, we kind of know them. I mean, we know the mayor and we know Commissioner Beatty, but uh, Councilor Beatty. But if but she the, loses, she'll go back to being on the council. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. But these three people running for this new council seat, yeah, I have no idea who they are. It might be nice to have them if we could. Oh, I agree. One of them's a former NAC chair, so. Oh Ooh. my God, really? Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm not telling you who to vote for or anything, but 
it would be nice to have a bunch of NAC representatives up on the dais, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> hey, I, I just missed my time on the uh, on the float this year, man. Oh, the yeah. At the parade, it was the best. 